right, but this form here, this is where the biggest financial mistake happens for most people. Okay. So what happens here is, has anybody, do anybody know what this form is right here? This is called the W-4. Okay. Everybody gets one of these. When you fill out a job and you went to uh, fill out the application, all that stuff and got a job, you went to orientation and they gave you one of these things. I remember the first time I got one, I said, what do I put on here? Anybody remember that? And they say, well, if you got, how many kids you got? I said, none. They say, put zero. Anybody heard them say that? You got two, two kids, put two. Well, you, you, you married? Yeah, you married. Okay. So you, how many kids you got? Two. Well, you put, you, you take one and the husband take one. Anybody heard all that stuff? All that's wrong. If you don't want to owe, put zero. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. All that is wrong. So let's talk about it. Remember, 80% of the people in this country get a tax deduction. I mean, not tax deduction, but a tax refund. So that means that they overpay taxes. Now, here's what we got to do. <clears throat> now, I've had people that were tax people that had people doing this here. They would say, okay, head of household and all this other stuff. So let's go to head of household so we know what head of household means. Generally, you can claim head of household filing status on your tax return only if you are unmarried. I have people that are married saying, well, I make more money, so I'm head of household. <laughs> I have people say, I'm the husband, so I'm the, I'm the head of household. And you have tax people letting them do this. That's wrong. You get caught doing that, you get the problem. You're going to have a problem. Okay? So, only if you are unmarried and pay more than 50% of the cost of keeping up the home for yourself and your dependents or other qualifying individuals. See publication 501. So, okay. Now, first, the second thing you want to understand here is they, people think, well, if I change this form, I'm going to get in trouble. The IRS is going to mess me up. Okay? Well, it says right here at the top, purpose. Now, I was just talking to this young man here. He said when he got his W-4, what they do? You, they didn't give you this part. They just gave you the bottom half. <laughs> That's what happens most times. They give you the bottom little thing here and say, fill this out. See, you got the blind leading the blind. The person at HR don't know anything about this. And what's happened is when you ask them, what do you put on this form? You're asking a very serious business question to a person that's not a business person. Does that make sense? So now let's talk about it. Purpose. Complete the form W-4 so that your employer can withhold the correct amount of federal income tax from your pay. Consider completing a new W-4 form each year and when your personal or financial situation changes. When a person joins business with us, guess what happened? Their financial situation changed. I know people that's been on a job 20 years and haven't seen this form since then. They got married and got divorced and bought a house, did all kinds of stuff and never changed this form. This is why they get big refunds because they overpay. Now, let's go down here. Manola, I want you to do me a favor right here. Bring A here all the way up to the top. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this. This is an example that I'm going to do. This is a woman making $50,000 a year and she has two children. $50,000 a year, two children. Now, most people would take the position, well, I got two children, I just put two and turn it in. But let's look at this. It says, enter one for yourself is no one else can claim you as a dependent. So should you ever have zero? See, somebody told you don't want to open zero, that was wrong. So right here, we got one. So, okay, I'm going to do this. A, B, C, D, E, F. G H. Okay. We got one here. B. If you are single and have only one job, this person is single and only have one job, they got one. So should they ever have zero? <clears throat> and the one for your spouse, they don't have a spouse. D. Okay. Enter number of dependents. Now it's asking you about what? Your children. We got two. These children are fairly older children, says enter one if you're going to file head of household. Okay. So the, she is going to file head of household because she is unmarried and paying more than 50% of the upkeep. So she got one here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. She does not have five children. See, people think, what well, are they talking about dependence on that form? No, it's allowances. These are allowances, not dependents. Okay. We only talk about dependents right here. 
But we still are not done. Let's go to F. Enter one if you have at least $2,000 of child dependent care expenses. That's things like daycare. Well, since these are a little bit older, we're going to say she doesn't have that. So we got zero. G. Child tax credit. Well, how do you find out? It says, okay, if your total income is less than $65,000, $95,000 if you're married, enter two for each eligible child. We got two eligible children, so we got what? Bam. Now it says add these up. One, two, four, five, nine. This person's supposed to have nine without a home-based business. And they had two. That's why they get a $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 refund. Got it? But see, now let's talk about adding the home-based business. Okay, let's go to the next page, Manola. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just bring this up just a little bit here so I can see the top here. Okay. Now, the government don't even want you to be precise about this. They say enter what? An estimate. An estimate, 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 estimate of your 2014 itemized deductions. These include qualifying home mortgage interest, charitable contributions, and state and local taxes. So let's say this woman has roughly about $15,000 between all those things here. She's got a mortgage and stuff and state and local taxes, all that. So got about $15,000. Okay. Now, it says you've got medical expenses in excess of 10% of your income. Now, if you got medical expenses that high, you might, you're almost dead. So... You probably don't qualify for that. But now it says, okay, number two, enter your filing status. The first side is for what is called standard filers. That's how you pick up your allowances there. But the second side is for itemized filers. So you pick up the difference on the back side. Make sense? Now, here we got, okay, our filing status. We filed in the head of household. We got 9,100. Let's make it 9000 to round real easy here. Okay, so we got what? $6,000 difference. Okay. Now, it says subtract two from one. That's what I just did. It says, okay, number four, enter an estimate of your 2014 adjustments to income. Tax deductions are what? Adjustments to income. Uh-oh. Now we're getting ready to put the home-based business on the W-4. So based on that scenario, we calculated out that we was going to have about $5,000 in income. We had $20,000 in tax deductions. So we would have $15,000 from this projected Schedule C here. Now it says, okay, add lines three and four together. So I got $21,000 here. Line six, in an estimate of your 2014 non-wage income. Well, that's stuff like dividends and stuff like that. Most people don't have any of those, Preston. So we don't have anything there. So it's zero. Line seven. Subtract line six from five. It's nothing to subtract. So it's 21,000. Now look at this now. Look at this now. Look at this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. You get ready to watch it. Divide line seven by 39.50. Okay, so let me get my calculator. 21,000. Divided by 39.50, we come up with what? 5.31. So now it says drop the fraction. Five. The home based business allowed us five new allowances instantly. Instantly. Add them together. I could legally put 14 on my W-4 and turn into HR the next day. And on my next paycheck, I'm going to have instant two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars per month back into my check. Now we got cash flow. See, we changed the cash flow situation instantly. Now we ain't got to do this thing that we play that game. Woo, I, I claim nine for six months and zero the next six months. Is that's what you hear people doing all that little crazy stuff. Or oh, when I get ready to get my bonus, I take it on up to 10, and I take it on back down. 
all that craziness. No, just do it like this.